Now, when you think of low-cost airlines, you probably think of the likes of Spirit or Frontier or maybe even Ryanair in Europe. Cramped seats, terrible food and awful service are what they're known for. But I've found an airline that claims to have none of that. In fact, they're the first low-cost airline in the world offering life flat beds across their fleet. This week, I'm taking a flight on them to find out exactly what they're like. All right, it's time to head back to the airport and say goodbye to Tokyo. One thing I've learned since I've been here in Tokyo, by the way, um, is not to take a taxi because they are um, flipping expensive. My ride into town from Narita the other day, 30 miles, it cost me over 200 US dollars, 220 actually, um, to be precise. So um, yeah, I'm, let's, let's not do that again. Let's um, see if we can get a train out to Narita Airport. Now last time I took a train here in Japan, it didn't go all that well with the whole ticketing thing. But today I was full of confidence that the Tokyo Metro would be a little easier to navigate than the whole Shinkansen system. However, it seemed that confidence might have been a little bit premature. I headed to a ticket machine to try and buy a ticket to Narita Airport. And while this machine seemed to include every other station in the Greater Tokyo area, it had nothing listed for Narita Airport. Once again, I found myself going to speak to the man. Hi. 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 Um, I need to go to Narita. Narita. Uh, sorry. Uh, the, uh, oh, I need a ticket though. Oh, when a ticket. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Thank you. And so off I went to the other ticket machines on the other side of the station. I just hoped I'd have a little bit better look over that side. But it seemed we still had a little bit of a problem because although this machine would sell me a ticket to Narita, it also only accepted cash and not cards. Back I went to the man in the booth who must have been getting fed up with me by now. Hi. Does it take card? Credit card? No, it wouldn't take card. Ah, sorry, uh, the ticket, cash only. Cash only, okay. Uh, Is there an ATM nearby? ATM, uh, straight and turn left and down stairs. Perfect, thank you. Sorry. So next stop on my great quest of navigating the Tokyo Metro was to try and find the ATM. I'd really been hoping to get through my Japanese adventure without having to carry too much cash on me, but it seemed that on my way out of the country would finally be the time when I had to concede and get myself some yens. Everything in Japan seems to play a tune, and the ATMs here are no exception. So now I had my yens and it was time to go and get a ticket for the train. And finally success, I now not only had a bit of paper to get myself on the train but also a pocket full of change I had to carry around for the rest of the trip. Alright, I finally got my ticket for the Tokyo Metro. Um, they only take cash, so <laughs> just a bit annoying for a one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world, they only take cash on the subway, so um, let's um, see if we can find where the train goes from. I headed to the ticket barriers and by some miracle from the heavens, it actually let me through. to Narita Airport, I think. There's a lot of people with cases on the train, so it's going to Hanai Airport, hopefully the right airport. <laughs> oh, dear. It's not an easy place to navigate around if you don't speak any of um, the local language, unfortunately. But um, hey, it's all part of the adventure, isn't it? Um, who knows where we'll end up today? Hopefully it's an airport so we can take this flight. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> The train out to Narita Airport from downtown Tokyo is crazy long. It takes over two hours to get from downtown out to the airport, but eventually after crawling through the suburbs of Tokyo, we got to Narita Airport and finally it was time to go and try and get on my flight. Yay, we made it. It's the Narita Airport, albeit like nearly two hours after we left downtown Tokyo. Flipping out, it would have been much quicker on a taxi, but hey, 
a lot cheaper doing it um, by train. Anyway, today we're flying on a low cost airline. We're trying to keep it low cost today. That's why I did the train. Um, because I'm flying on a low cost airline, but it's not just any low cost airline today. It's an air a low cost airline that has live flat bed seats on it. Um, so you get to save the money and hopefully get a nice night's sleep as well. So um, let's go and get checked in for our flight today with Zip Airlines. My next stop then was to go and try and check in and I tried to use these self-serve kiosks here in Narita but unfortunately it wouldn't let me check in because it said I had special needs. Special needs? What? Uh, special ask, needs. Okay, can I ask your destination today? Uh, Bangkok. Bangkok, okay. okay. I don't think I have special needs. Okay, but. <laughs> here? I'm sorry for you. Oh no, it's okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I headed to the check-in desk where I explained my predicament. Hello, the machine said I had special needs and I had to come here. <laughs> what did you do? Then I went to the machine, it said I had special needs and I had to come to the desk. So. You are special needs. So maybe, maybe just a special, special person. So yeah. <laughs> so I know it. <laughs> you have a chicken bag, by the way? Uh, no, I'm just going to take it as, uh, can I say this as carry-on? Okay, I need to carry on or carry-on, isn't it? Okay, okay. yeah. I thought you put a machine is maybe for the wife or the assistant things because of the we have to register for your staying oh, okay. in Thailand. Yes, so do okay. you have it for some hotel information? Uh, or yes, I do. I can give you that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So it's, it's this hotel, the Le Meridian, but the address oh, is good. Okay, thank you. Keep right. waiting. Okay, gate number today 22 Perfect. and 430 Japanese time. Not American time. <laughs> not American time, time, not yeah. time. yeah. So 427, yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. So, 4.30, okay? Okay, so perfect. So, this is all the package come back behind your boarding pass. Okay. Don't forget to pick up. Perfect. Enjoy your Thank you very much. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. All right then, so checked in. Um, um, although Zip Air are an airline that have live flat seats, they're still actually a low cost airline, obviously. So um, that means that the baggage is a bit more strict on there and they wouldn't let me take on my trolley bag as my carry-on bag. I only have a seven, seven kilo allowance um, for the carry-on. So I've had to check that in. Thankfully, they've not charged me. So um, I don't know if that's just something that you get with the, um, the flatbed bit of it. I don't know. Uh, they've not charged me for my checked in bag so that's pretty good so let's get through security um, and head down to the plane well other than going through pre-check in the states that's got to be the easiest um, security i've ever done at two minutes straight through anyway now to customs and immigration that could take a bit longer okay yeah, yeah. uh, foreign british huh? oh you came on a visitor uh, yes let's go ahead and go scan your passport and sort your gate all right okay. outside through through this bit yeah that okay was. thank you Oh, British, yeah. British, yeah. Uh, that's why it doesn't like me. Mm. Nobody okay, does. What's number 11, please? Oh, okay, thank you. All right, the machines didn't like me. Um, I'm not having a very good day with machines today, am I? Um, but I ended up going through the manual kind of lady behind a desk version of the um, passport desk, and um, no problem, just scanned me out. And now I'm heading to the gate, air sign at Narita. Uh, obviously, even though we've got all flat bed seats and stuff. I feel really bad without my bag. Um, <laughs> it's been checked in, it's been checked in. Um, even though we've got like flat bed seats and stuff, there's no business class lounge or anything today. So um, I'm gonna grab a bite to eat before we get on the plane, I think. So with no lounge today, I decided to go and get some authentic Japanese food before I said goodbye to Japan. Konnichiwa. Can I have the milk teriyaki burger, please? Uh, uh, the beef. Please. Oh, pork, yes, yeah, pork, please. As a meal, meal, yes, please, with Diet Coke, but large, please. Thank you, Arigato. Thank you. All right, then, gone for the um, Nook Teriyaki burger. You've got to try the Japanese cuisine while you're here, haven't you? Um, so I'll be having that in just a couple of minutes. Um, the Zip Air operate Boeing 787 Dreamliners from here in Tokyo to numerous places, actually. You can get them to Bangkok, Singapore, and Seoul. If you go to the west um, and over towards the States, they fly to San Francisco and San Jose, California at the minute, which is a, um, sounds like a bit of a random one, but actually that's obviously Silicon Valley and a lot of the engineers and stuff going over there to work for the big tech companies fly on Zip Air because they just commute between Japan and Silicon Valley. It's pretty cool, really. Um, but they've got these Dreamliners, as I mentioned, they've got a lot of economy seats in them, but then they also have the flat 
flatbeds at the front as well, which is pretty cool for a low-cost carrier. I've never seen an air, a low-cost airline with flatbeds on it before, so it'll be interesting to see what they're like when I got on board when I finished my teriyaki burger. Mm. Right then, let's try this Nook teriyaki. Oh. It's, um, interesting. Mm. It, it's okay. It's, it's a pork burger, which is interesting. I've seen them do pork burgers, which is quite nice. Just basically a burger with teriyaki sauce on it, the milk teriyaki. All right. It was soon time to try and get on board the flight across to Bangkok, or at least that was the plan. May I see your boarding pass? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Could you wait a moment? Yes, of course. And once again, machines were not on my side today. Okay. Okay. Hi, thank you I got on board the Zip Air 787 and it's fair to say I was pretty impressed with the life flat cabin here at the front. The seats are in this beautiful black leather. It looks like something that you'd find in a luxury car rather than a low cost airline. It was all very nice indeed. All right then, welcome aboard the Zip Air Tokyo Boeing 787. This is the flatbed seats that they have here at the front. You can um, get a choice basically between buying the economy seats down the back or you can upgrade to have these flatbed seats. It's a low cost airline, but they have flatbed seats. It's an amazing and it's super, super cool seats as well. So this seat here, it's all branded. It's like something out of a Ferrari sports car or something. It's all branded up with Zip Air here. It's all black and sleek and silver and stuff. Very, very nice. Um, controls for the seat all along here. Look at those, aren't they smart? Hey, all touch controls there. Um, and then there's more controls for the seat there. No TV screen here because, um, after all, this is a low cost airline. They don't have the um, TV screen, but it does say that you can go on the Wi Fi. So maybe they have something on the Wi Fi. We'll try that in a bit. But there's just um, like a seat pocket, um, pocket there for like the safety card and stuff like that. Uh, there's no obviously screens. Um, so it's basically like a stripped down BE Aerospace Super Diamond seat, really. That's pretty much what we're working with here. And we're looking forward to seeing what the flatbed's like later, whether it's any good. Um, oh yeah, we've got power and stuff there as well, that's quite nice. So international power adapter and um, a USB socket there. It's, it's all pretty decent, isn't it? Quite nice, this, for you know the amount that you save. Um, which I'll, I'll talk to you about how much this flight's cost a little bit later on in the flight, as I usually do. but. The, the amount of money that this has saved over flying business class just to get a good night's sleep um, it's actually worked out pretty decent so um, yeah we should be getting off from that Tokyo pretty soon for the ride over to Bangkok and fairly soon and right on time it was time to push back from the gate and get on our way to Bangkok after we pushed back from the gate the ground crew gave us a fond farewell and we taxied out to the runway here at Narita It was pretty interesting seeing United Boeing 737s here in Tokyo across the other side of the Pacific. They base a few here to use on the island hopper route across to Hawaii. But as we followed out behind him, we took off to head across in the other direction to Thailand. Our route tonight then took us southwest out of Tokyo to fly down around Taiwan and across to Vietnam before descending down into Bangkok. Flight time tonight was six hours exactly, cruising at 40,000 feet. We're in an airborne from Tokyo saying goodbye to Japan. Well, and, until tomorrow anyway. Um, you see, the thing is, I'm heading home back to the States. Flights from um, Japan to the US, ridiculously expensive. If I fly from either Malaysia or Thailand, it's like a fraction of the price. And when I say a fraction of the price, it's like 20% of the price. So I'm taking this flight to uh, Bangkok. I've got an overnight layover there tonight and then tomorrow morning back to Tokyo and then onwards to um, San Francisco from there uh, with another airline. Um, so that's why I'm heading to Bangkok tonight for one night only. Uh, but this is really comfortable. You know, this is a low cost airline. 
it wasn't that expensive. It was cheap enough for me to be able to buy this as part of my sort of flight home. Um, that's how cheap it is. And um, it, it, it's no frills, but it's nice no frills. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, you don't very often get it. If, you, if you're on a low-cost airline usually and you go for a premium seat, you're generally going for one of the crappy recliners that sort of goes back a little bit. You can't stretch out across it or anything like that. They're not exactly the best. Whereas with this airline, if you pay a little bit of a premium, you get to travel on a lie flat bed just like this. Right, so one thing that you don't get on a low-cost airline by default that you get when you fly business class on another airline is an amenity kit. Although with Zip Air, you can buy an amenity kit when you book your flight. And I have bought one. It's a bloody big amenity kit, isn't it? $20 for this lot. So let's see what we get for our $20. Zip Air, by the way, give you the chance to buy us so much stuff when you buy the flight. Like the most random stuff that you can get either. I mean, I... I want the, the strangest item that I saw on there was possibly they sell ladies kind of pants for when it's that time of the month you can buy them for when you fly on your flight um, I mean okay interesting it's, 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 it's interesting I mean I, I didn't buy any of those obviously I, I don't need any of those but um, it's good that they give the option to get them but this is the zip air amenity kit for $20 let's see what we get for our 20 bucks a nice pair a nice pair zip air slippers albeit they're Japanese size they're not going to fit my size 13 feet I don't think but hey what are the thoughts there oh we get a lovely eye mask that does look nice actually hey now that is a premium eye mask that is proper nice it's like silky padded I have got an eye mask at home that I use um, that I bought from a duty free stop once a duty free shop at once in London it cost me about 30 quid and it is about the same sort of quality of that. That is a good quality eye mask. That just look at that. You can't see that, but it's it's lovely. That is. Oh, okay. It's a Zip Air inflatable neck pillow. You blow it up, and you got an, an, a neck pillow. There we go. And finally, this is amazing. So it's a Zip Air fleece blanket, but that is soft and soft and squishy. Anna's going to be nabbing this when I get home. I have a feeling that she'll be nicking that off me. Um, and it comes with a little bag to put it in as well. Look at that look. That is so cool. $20 for all this lot. That's a pretty good value for money immunity kit, isn't it? It's the best immunity kit I've ever had on a plane anyway. Wow. And that's something else I bought when I bought the flight was my in-flight meal. Again, you don't get your meals included on Zip Air, even if you're in one of these big life flat seats. It's not part of the, what you get, which is how they keep the prices so cheap, really. Um, which, to be honest, I quite like, because you know what? If I'm flying on a sort of an eight or a nine hour overnight flight in a flatbed, I don't want to be waiting around for like an hour, two hours after takeoff to have my big dinner service and wait for it to all be cleared away while you get served a lavish three course meal. And then you've got like to wait for them to come and clear it up and everything. I don't want all of that necessarily. If I'm on a sort of eight or a nine hour overnight flight, by the time that's all done, you've sort of eaten into a lot of your sleeping time. So the fact that you get a choice to actually have a meal or not, I think it's pretty cool, really. Um, it's nice that you actually get that option with Zip Air. If I was going um, sort of Tokyo to San Jose or something on one of the West Coast flights, it's like a nine hour flight. I don't think I'd get a meal on that flight. It's a nine hour overnight flight. Why would you want your meal? Um, you can eat before you get on the plane and sleep um, if you're in one of these seats. But anyway, um, I've bought a meal today. See what it's like. We've gone for the Zip Original Wagyu Beef Curry Rice. And it comes with a bottle of water. So um, let's have a look and see. Let's have a look and see what's it, what it's like. It's quite tasty. It's low cost, it's low cost airline microwave food. So. The rice is like a slab of rice, but other than that, it's quite nice, really. Now then, as we saw earlier, and as you can see by the lack of a TV screen here, there isn't actually any in-flight entertainment built in normally on a business class seat or one of these flatbed seats. You'd have a nice big TV screen here, but no, we've just got the safety card, information about the Wi-Fi. But here is the in-flight entertainment. So I've connected to the Wi-Fi, um, so we get basically free internet, interesting. Let's connect to the free internet and see what that's like. Free internet on a low cost, I've not had that since I flew Norwegian. I don't know whether it's going to be any good mine, but we can give it a go. Don't seem to be getting very far with this. 
I'll come back to the free internet in a bit. Um, in flight services, um, there's our flight number from Narita to Bangkok. We've actually got a version of Flight Path 3D. Wow, that's pretty cool. Oh, I like that. That's very nice. In flight shopping. Let's have a look. Goods, what can we buy? Oh, there we go. Sanitary napkins. Mobile toothbrushes. Eye mask, neck pillow. Original comfort set. Oh, we can get a remove before flight tag. Oh, awesome. Uh, the blankets. USB cables. It's cool you can actually get USB cables and things on here. Here we go. Signature shorts. These are your um, sanitary shorts. If you want any of those. They've got three pairs of each left on board. So, I don't know whether they go up to my size or not. That's the trouble. And then food and beverage. You can buy food and drink on here as well. Look, so you can buy your Pringles and stuff through here. And they'll just bring it to your seat. It's pretty cool. In-flight entertainment. What have we got on the way of in-flight entertainment? So, we've got movies, special contents. Um, there's quite a few movies there. Crazy Rich Asians, Joker, Shawshank Redemption, Tom and Jerry, Wonder Woman. A few movies to watch. Special contents. We can watch the music video for the Zip Air boarding music if we really want to. <laughs> oh, and there's an advert for the BA Signature Shorts. their signature shorts don't they oh i need to watch the music for the I need to watch the music video for the boarding music let's have a look there he is look there's Deppa pepper playing his guitar doesn't it look handsome on the side of a hill playing the guitar wonderful um yeah so that's um if we can watch that if we want to that's pretty cool i don't think they have young sheldon i don't know whether it, you can say that's any better than young sheldon i'm not entirely sure um but um yeah Let's go back to um, Wi-Fi, see if we can get on the Wi-Fi, and, and it don't work. Okay, I mean, it's, it's nice free Wi-Fi, you can get you to that page that says Safari can't open the page, so it'll keep you reading, it's something to read for a little bit, isn't it? About 30 seconds. Safari can't open the page because it couldn't establish a secure connection to the server. It's like a haiku. Um, anyway, so yeah, the Wi-Fi is no good, but there's some decent entertainment on there anyway. Um, if you really want to um, watch the music video to the Zip Air's boarding music, or if you want to buy a pair of sanitary pants, well then, yeah, um, you, you, you're all set on Zip Air, really. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. <laughs> Right then, time for the Zip Air Loo review. This is one of the middle loos in the plane. Yeah, there's basically four loos across, um, one on either side and then two in the middle. This is one of the ones in the middle. Um, there's no toilets at the front of this plane. Um, so effectively this is the front, the, the, the furthest forward that you get. And it's at the back of the lifelike cabin before you get to the like main economy cabin. Um, and it's quite nice. The um, floor's quite... Um, stylish there very clean very clean as you would expect on a japanese airline we've got signs there no smoking in the lav um which um is fair enough we've got um, this oh what's this sign is like an angry man going no smoking in the lavatory is a violation of the law violators subject to fine and on the back please do not throw paper towels in toilets it may cause clogging and lavatories being out of order So there you go, that's told me. Um, and we've got that sign there. Um, sorry, that's a mirror there. It's a typical Dreamliner double mirror thing there. Nice sink there. You see what I mean about the flashing, by the way? I know I've spoken to you before about the flashing. Boeing planes don't get flashing light in the loo, whereas if you fly on an Airbus plane, then the lights all flash. And um, no matter what you do with the frame rate of the camera to try and fix that, then it doesn't it doesn't fix it basically i think it's to do with the frequency that they use with electricity boeings aren't too bad boeings seem to be pretty kind of standard and then you've got a door here that actually goes through to the other side you can open that door if you use this um, key here that'll open that and take you through to the other loo but that is the lube on the zip air 787 that was the noel phillips loo review I popped back to have a look at the standard seating at the back of the plane as well and even those seats looked really nice. They were all still really modern and smart with the black leather and those fancy zip air headrests. 
But now, for me back in the front of the plane, it was time for me to try out the pièce de résistance of the flatbed experience on Zip Air and put down the bed to see what it was like. All right, so the main selling point then of the Life Flat Bed service on Zip Air is, of course, the Life Flat Bed. So, shall we see what this is like? It's pretty nice, actually. It's um, this is like a soft leather around here, so that's quite nice. The leg room's pretty decent. My feet are. I'm six foot four. My head is touching the top. My feet are probably that far off. That far off, touching the bottom. Not very far. Um, it, 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 it's not massively spacious, but then you have to remember this is a low-cost airline at the end of the day, and um, the seat is actually quite nice. We've got like little reading lights up here. It's not a control for the seat just down the side here um, as well, but this is pretty comfy. Um, and with my sort of blanket that I've got and everything else on my iron mask, I can see myself getting a good night's kip here. Um, because the pillow's sort of built in here, you don't need like an extra pillow, although you do get your inflatable neck pillow in that kit that I bought. But, um, again, if you're travelling a lot, you're probably going to have all your own sort of stuff like that anyway, aren't you? So why would you need all that to be provided with like top of the range bedding from Bed Bath and & Beyond and duvets and quilts and stuff? You know, you're sleeping on a plane at the end of the day and I'm slightly more comfortable down here than it is down at the back. And I think ultimately that's the thing, isn't it? All you want sometimes on the fly is to get a good night's rest and um, I think you could certainly do it on here and for quite a reasonable price too. As the sun started to sink into the horizon, we were treated to a beautiful sunset as we started our descent down into Thailand. They just told us we were about to start our descent down into Bangkok. We've just flown over Da Nang in Vietnam. I've been there, beautiful part of the world. I did my... We did a flight to Da Nang Air Seoul. Go on, Air Seoul from Seoul um, into Da Nang. Um, they were they were interesting they were pretty cool I mean, they were a, a low-cost airline they didn't have this sort of um, setup did they um so yeah how much did this flight cost i know you want to know the answer to that question um and this flight on the life flat seat from bangkok to tokyo uh, from tokyo to bangkok it's a five hour flight so quite a long flight it's cost me 700 us dollars to sit in the seat it was about 400 to sit down the back or 700 up here which isn't bad at all considering that if you want to fly a business class with, say, ANA or somebody like that down to Bangkok, you'd be talking at least double that, probably $2,000 um, one way to fly business class with them. And you'd probably be talking about six, dollars $700 to fly in coach down the back. And with Zip Air, you get to ride up here in a life flat seat. And um, it's, it's not just any life flat seat. It's a really nice one. I mean, this, uh, the quality of this seat, man, it's just incredible. You can... You can't get this on the video. You can smell like the fresh leather. I mean, this plane's 10 years old, but this smells of leather. You know, like when you get into like a brand new Mercedes or something like that, and you can just smell it. That's what it's like. It's so cool as well. Lovely, lovely sea with this, and the mood lighting going on and everything. It's just really nice. Zip Air are pretty cheap on their flights across um, the Pacific as well. I've been looking at flights back from Tokyo um, to the West Coast. And, when the other airlines in business class like ANA or JAL, they're looking at charging, I think one way they were looking at charging about four or five grand US. Um, for the dates that I'm looking at flying back tomorrow, they wanted $8,000 one way in business class, which is why I've come to Bangkok to fly, because it's only 1500 from Bangkok. <laughs> um, but um, whereas other airlines are charging up to a grand zip air on the routes to the west coast you can pick up a one-way flight on the life flat seat for fourteen hundred dollars i mean you cannot complain at that to get this sort of seat for a nine ten hour flight across the pacific like that for fourteen hundred dollars it's just insane and that's the thing i love about zip air sometimes all you want on a flight is a comfy seat to stretch out in and sleep without all the added bits and pieces you get with the full business class experience if you just want a place to sleep and arrive refreshed without all the extras like lounge access, three tons of baggage allowance, fancy meals and a lady to make your bed for you, then this arrangement is perfect. I just wish more airlines would take Zip Air's lead in offering this sort of service. Imagine if for a couple of hundred dollars you could get a flatbed on Jetstar or Scoot. Yep, you'd probably still be late, but at least you'd be late having had a good night's sleep.
you to my Patreons as always for their continued support of the channel. Your support on Patreon not only gets you early access to my videos, access to my WhatsApp group and regular group Zoom calls with me, but it helps me grow the channel too. Welcome to Bangkok in Thailand. It's late at night and I've still got to get my bag, so um, just fingers crossed it's turned up, hey. Right, easiest passport check ever. <laughs> Literally walked up, stopped my passport, let me through. So welcome to Thailand, so here we go. Um, I'm ready until tomorrow anyway. Hopefully, in a minute, my bag will come out of this hallowed space. So I'm gonna stand here, just sort of downwind of it so it should come down there hopefully fingers crossed all right made it my bags made it as well yay Woo survived um so now i need to get to my hotel hi hello um i just need a car to take me to the le meridian hotel please you're the youtuber i am the youtuber yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, nice to meet you. yeah you too <laughs> i watch your video oh, that's funny <laughs> you don't have to treat yourself so bad sometimes you fly coach so many hours nah, i know yeah. you, you just have much better enjoy well, thank you very much yeah. enjoy your trip <laughs> Uh-huh, yeah, perfect. So, so ticket outside, get number five, left okay. hand side counter. Lovely, I'll just give it to them. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, bye-bye. All right, given the choice between getting a public taxi and going to one of these little counters where they arrange a transfer for you, I always prefer them. They might cost a little bit more money, but I've learned my lesson the hard way that sadly, some public taxis take you for a ride, literally. So, um, number five, here we go. Hi. Who wants it? There you go, thank you. So yeah, sometimes you don't get the um, sometimes you don't get the option. You have to take just a normal taxi, but if they've got one of these stands where you can actually book one and do it all officially, that seems to me to be the safest way, even if it costs you a bit more. Um, but hey, I'm probably not the one to take lessons from because I'm usually the one that ends up getting ripped off by um, dodgy taxi drivers. But um, this is okay here. It's not too bad. So um, short ride, I think. To the airport hotel or just off the airport and then um yeah sleep good evening yeah thank you very much thank you yeah good it was good thank you yeah there you go thank you very much thank you have a good evening thank you lovely thank you hi good evening how are you oh thank you very much thank you Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah. Can I take oh, you to the room? Uh, yeah, you can do it, please. Yeah. Thank you. Six one eight. Six one eight. This way, huh? Thank you. Yeah. Fly back to USA. Uh, back to USA. Yeah. Oh. Are you from West Coast? Uh, well, I'm from the UK. I'm British. So, um, but I live in Texas in, in, in the center. In the yeah, in the south. Yeah. Everyone's a Thai. Texas barbecue. Ah, uh, it's nice. Yeah, it's best barbecue. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay, Thank sir. you. All right, then welcome to my hotel here in Bangkok. This is the Le Meridian Hotel in Suwanabumi. It's um, about 20 minutes drive from Bangkok airport. Um, it's the closest Marriott property that I could find to the airport. Um, so that's why I've stayed here really, because um, I, as I've said before in some of my other videos, I like Marriott's and um, this is where I am tonight, and I think they've upgraded my room as well, actually, which is quite nice. This is um, what I've got, what I'm working with. I've got a nice, like, super king bed here. Um, there's a little couch and a table down here, work area, um, quite a big TV. Uh, oh, there's a balcony outside as well, wow. Uh, how do I get out? I'm not going to open that because there's a lizard running around. Ooh. I've got a balcony look out there with like a little bed thing on it, so it's quite nice, isn't it? Um, overlooking the um, resort area and then we've got over here a beautiful bathroom um, with a massive bath um, sink and everything huge shower here and um, the toilet at the back and it's not a Japanese toilet not a fancy Japanese one but hey what does it matter we're here for one night because tomorrow I'm heading home well first actually tomorrow heading to um, back to Tokyo again first thing in the morning so I've got that tomorrow morning um, with another uh, really cool airline and then from Tokyo continuing back 
um, on the same airline to um, the US. So tomorrow it's home time. This trip has gone on now for about 10 days since I left home. Um, and um, yeah, I am absolutely cream crackered. I'm ready to get back. So I've got one very quick night of sleep here. And then tomorrow morning, jumping on the plane back to Tokyo and then back home. Um, let me know what, what you thought to zip air down in the comments. As always, hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.